Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this tutorial, we are going to install the BSPWM window manager or the bitmap space partitioning window manager. This video is going to be about the base installation. So we are just going to install the packages and configure the base settings. In next videos, we are going to install also a bar for it and we're gonna customize it even further. So without further ado, let's get going. So let's get going here. I'm assuming here that you already installed the base of Watch Linux. And if you followed one of my previous tutorial for that, then you're ready to go and we can install the BSPWM window manager. So let's get going here and let's hit Arch Linux on the list on Grub. And it's gonna take a moment to boot up the system. There you go. So let's enter our username and the password. And now we are logged in into the system. Now I'm going to increase the font size here so that you can see better what I'm doing in the console. And I already installed actually a font called Terminus font that allows me to have bigger fonts here on the console. So to use it, I can type in set font and then ter for the name of the font, dash 132, this is the size and, and hit enter. And now we have the font set and you can definitely see better on the display. So let's clean up the terminal. And now in this video, we are going to install the packages for BSPWM and configure the base settings only. In future videos, we are going to go more in depth in the configuration files and we are going to add also a bar to our installation. So let's get going here. And the first thing we need to do is actually to install a graphic driver. So let's type in sudo pacman-s. If you have an Intel card, we can type in xf86-video-intel. You can replace Intel with AMD GPU if you have an AMD card. And if you have an NVIDIA card, you can replace the whole thing here with NVIDIA and also NVIDIA-utils. You could also install NVIDIA-settings. So this will work for most NVIDIA cards, but if you have a card which is from 2010 and older, you might need to install some drivers from the AUR. And I will leave a link to this in the video description below. So let me delete these packages because I don't have any of those cards. In my case, I can install xf86-video-qxl as a mono VM. And then we need to install our display server. Now we want to install a window manager here. So we wouldn't actually need to install the whole XOR group. We could install, for example, only XOR server and XOR X in it, for example. But because the XOR group has many fonts in there, I'm going to install it nevertheless. If you want to make your installation lighter, just install the XOR server and the XOR X in it eventually. So I'm going to type in here XORG. And now we can choose a display manager. And if you want to go with a display manager, I recommend you use, in this case, LightDM. And also remember to install the greeter, LightDM GTK greeter, as it's cross-platform and it works really well. But in my case, actually, I want to use this window manager with X in it. And the reason is because normally I would work in the console and I would start the window manager just when I need it. So to do this, I'm going to install also xwork-x in it. And then we are going to install also the packages that we need for our window manager. So the first one is, of course, PSPWM. And I need to install also SXHKD. This is the program which will take care of our key bindings. I want to install also DMenu to have a launcher available in the window manager. I'm going to install also Nitrogen to take care of our wallpapers. We could install also FE. I did this in previous tutorials. This time I'm going to use Nitrogen. And I'm going to install also a compositor, which is PyCom in my case, and also a terminal. In my case, I'm going to choose the XFC terminal. So I'll type in XFC4-terminal. In a normal installation, I would probably choose another terminal, like Termite, for example, but this will add an extra layer of complexity to the tutorial because we would need to configure the terminal as well. And I'd rather do this in a separate tutorial. So I'm choosing this terminal because it's very easy to configure. And I'm going to install also a browser at the end. So in my case, Chromium. And one last tool, actually, I would like to install is a render. So this is going to be useful if you have multiple monitors. It's a small graphical tool that will allow you actually to configure the monitors, save them to a script that you can launch when you launch your window manager. These are all the packages I need for the base install. So then I can hit enter and we need to enter the sudo password here. And now we need to accept all these defaults for the groups and proceed with the installation by hitting enter. So this is going to take a moment to download and install, and I'll be back when it's done. 
So there you go, the installation is now finished, so we can clean up the terminal. Now we still have to perform several steps to set up our window manager. And the first step is to create first two directories that we will need to copy our configuration files to. So let's do this by typing in mkdir, and we're gonna create the bspwm directory into our .config directory, which is in our home directory. So to do this, we can type in now .config slash and then the directory you want to create is bspwm, any tenter. Now let's pull up the last command with the up arrow and replace bspwm with the second directory we need to create, which is sxhkd, any tenter. Now we have the two directories created, so now we can copy our configuration files into these directories. Let's begin with the bspwmrc file, which is in our example file in our system. So to copy that file into the bspwm directory, we can type in cp and then slash user slash share slash doc slash bspwm slash examples and then bspwmrc and we're going to copy this, as we said before, under .config slash bspwm any tenter. So the configuration file for bspwm is now copied. Now we need to do the same for the other configuration file. So let me pull up here the last command and replace here bspwmrc with sxhkdrc. And we are going to copy this instead of the bspwm directory into the other directory that we created, which is the xxhkd directory, and then we can hit enter. There you go, the files are now there, so we can clean up the terminal. And let's just have a quick look at it. So let's have a look, for example, at our key bindings file. So let's type in vim.config slash sxhkd, and then sxhkdrc and hit enter. And you can see here we have our key binding. So the super key in BSPWM is the Windows key or the command key if you are on a Mac. And for example, to start the terminal, we would hit super and return, which is gonna start the URXVT terminal. However, I didn't install this terminal, so I actually can change it already here. So let's do this very quickly. Let me replace this terminal here with our terminal, which is XFC4-terminal. And we will have a more in-depth look at this file later when we start the window manager. For now, let's hit escape and save the file and exit Vim. Let's clean up the terminal. We won't have a look right now to our configuration file for BSPWM. We will look at it later. Now, what we need to do is to configure our X and ETRC so that we can start the window manager. So to do this, we need to actually copy the X in ETRC file under the Etsy directory into our home directory. So to do this, we can type in CP slash etsy, slash x11, and then xinit, and then xinitrc. And we're gonna copy this in our home directory, and the file is gonna be dot xinitrc, any tenter. There you go. So let's clean up the terminal and edit this xinitrc file. So to do this, we can type in vim dot xinitrc, any tenter. And what we need to do here, we need to scroll down at the end of the file because we need to delete these lines here and we need to replace them with what we need. So let me delete those. And now I want to actually set some commands here in my xnetrc file so that when the window manager starts, I have already certain settings available to me. And the first one is my keyboard layout. So I have a Swiss keyboard and of course you can change this accordingly to your keyboard, but the command to set that it's set xkbmap and then the definition of the country of your keyboard. In my case, it's CH. And then I'll have an ampersand at the end of the command. And then I can hit enter and proceed to the next command I want to actually have in the system, which is our compositor. So the compositor is PyCom. So I'll type in PyCom dash F for fade. So I want to have a fade effect basically when I switch between windows and then the ampersand again. Go down to the next line. And for now, I can set the last command, which is the command for executing bspwm. So I can type in exec bspwm, and then we can save the file and exit vim. Now, there is one thing I still need to do before I start the window manager. Because I'm on a VM, I need to actually disable a function in the compositor, otherwise I know it will not work. So let me do this very quickly. Probably you'll need to do this, but I have to type in sudo vim slash etsy slash xdg slash pycom.conf, any tenter enter my pseudo password. And I need to look for the vsync option, which is right here. 
and I basically need to comment this line so that the option is not anymore available. And then I can save the file and exit Vim. All right, now we are ready to start the window manager and to do this, we can type in startx and hit enter. So we don't have much to see here. We basically have a blank screen and the mouse cursor here, which is an X. We will change this in a second. But to make sure that the installation is working, let's set the key binding for starting the terminal, which is super enter. And as you can see, the XFC terminal is starting fine. So it means the system is actually working correctly. Now, the resolution of my display is not correct, as you can see, and we will fix this in a second. So to fix the resolution of the display, especially if you have a multiple display, we installed a tool called a render for that. We could use also XRender, and in my case, actually, that would be probably easier because I have only one monitor. But if you have multiple monitors, it's actually easier with a render because it's a graphical tool. So let's start iRender, and to open up the launcher, we can hit super spacebar, and the D menu is accessible to us. So I can type in here a render, and hit enter. And let me close this terminal. And as you can see here, I have only one monitor, so no big deal for me. I can configure this very easily, but you can repeat the process if you have several other monitors. So what I need to do here, I go to output and select my monitor, which is called virtual one and go to resolution and choose the resolution I want to have, which is in my case, 1920 per 1080. Now that I selected the resolution, I can actually click apply and it's going to be applied immediately. And now to make sure that it starts the next time I boot up my window manager, I can click here this save icon. And as you can see, it's going to create a new directory called dot screen layout. So I need to name actually this file, which is going to be a shell script. So let me name it, for example, display. You can name it, of course, whatever you like. And then we can click save. Now let me close this program by hitting super W and open up again the terminal and increase the font size here. Now, before we add this script to the xenitrc file, we need to make it executable. So to do this, we can type in chmod plus x and then dot screen layout slash display dot sh. This is the name I gave to the shell script. And then hit enter. Now we can enter this script also in our xenitrc file. So to do this, we can type in vim dot xenitrc and hit enter go down on the end of the file. Now we need to put the script before the compositor, otherwise the resolution doesn't display correctly. So let me enter the line here and I'll type in here the dollar sign and the home variable to indicate that the script is in our home directory and then slash dot screen layout slash display dot sh. And then we can save the file and exit Vim. And to test this out, let's go back to the console. So let's hit mod alt Q, clean up the terminal. And now if we type in start X, we have our full resolution here up and running. So let's hit again mod enter to have our terminal here and increase the font size. And we want to change again this X on the cursor that we saw before. So to do this, we need to edit again the Xenitor C file. So let me do this by typing in vim.xenitor C and hit enter. Okay, and I'll go down here and I'm going to enter here before the compositor a new line again. And I'm going to use the exit root command. And this is available because I installed the XOR group. If you didn't, you need to install also XOR dash exit root. So the command is exit root dash cursor underscore name and then left underscore PTR for pointer. And then we can save the file and exit Vim. Now let's exit again one more time BSPWM by hitting super alt Q and type in start S again. And now we have our left mouse pointer. Now let's begin to customize a little bit our BSPWM window manager. We will do more of this in the next videos, but for now let's just add a background and customize a little bit our terminal. So let's pull up our Chromium browser by hitting super space bar and typing in Chromium in my case. And as you know, I will definitely download some Japan wallpapers. So let me type in Japan 4K wallpapers and hit enter. And I'm going to click on images. And I'm going to click this one right here and open up the wallpaper. I'm going to check here my resolution, which is 1920 per 1080. And click here, right click and click save image as. And I'll just call the wallpaper Japan for me. It's enough. And I'm going to put it in the picture folder and click save. All right, now let's close the browser by hitting super W 
And with super spacebar, let's pull up nitrogen that we installed before. And let's go to preferences, hit add, go to our pictures folder, which is already selected here and click select and then click OK. Now we have our photo here. We can just click it. And for the fill here, I'm going to go with zoomed fill and click apply. Now we can close nitrogen by hitting super W and we have our wallpaper here. So we need to put nitrogen also in our X initrc file so that our wallpaper is always there when we boot up the window manager. So let's open up the terminal and increase the font size. And I'll type in vim.xinitrc and hit enter. Again, I'll go down at the end of the file and I will put this again after the display script. And I will insert a new line here. And the command is nitrogen dash dash restore and then the ampersign. Then we can save the file and exit Vim. And let's try it out. Let's hit super alt Q to exit the window manager and start X again. And we have our wallpaper there up for us. So let's go ahead now and take care also a little bit of our terminal. So let's pull it up with super enter. And I'm gonna go here under edit and preferences. First thing I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna take away the scroll bars. So disabled. And then under appearance, I'm going to use here the background transparent. There you go. Next, I want to take off also the display menu bar in the windows. And I maybe increase a little bit the font size so that I don't have to do it every time. So I'm going to go here to 18 and click select. There you go. That's much better. We can click close and then close once the terminal by hitting super W and open up the new one with super enter. And we have our terminal here up and running. Now, the last thing I want to show you here before we wrap this video up, it's the configuration file for BSPWM. So let's type in vim.config and then BSPWM and then BSPWMRC and hit enter. And you can see here, basically we have already 10 desktops available to us. Now we don't have any bar here on top or bottom, so we don't know on which desktop we are, but these desktops are already working. The second option here is for the border width. So you can change this accordingly to your liking. And also for the window gap. For me, it's actually it's fine. I like these borders as they are. And you can also configure other options here already available to us. Now we're going to look more at these in the next videos. So let me here save the file and exit Vim and clean up the terminal. And I'm going to type in here terminal one and open up a new terminal here with mod enter and a third one again with mod enter. So with mod C, we can cycle through open windows. So if I hit it once now, it's go to the terminal one. Again, it goes to the second terminal. I'll type in here terminal two. And then again, mod C to go to terminal three. Now we are on terminal three. If you want to put this terminal on the third desktop, we want to hit mod shift three. And you see the terminal is gone from here. If we hit now mod three to go to the third desktop, we have our third terminal here. As I said, without a bar, it's a little bit difficult, of course, to know, but we will do this in the next tutorial. For now, I just wanted to show you how it works. If you want to bring back this terminal to the first desktop, we hit mod shift one and then mod one to go to the first desktop. And we have our three terminals in here. So let me close them up with super W. And this is going to do it for the base installation of BSPWM. In the next video, we are going to install the polybar in here because I have already a configuration file for that, which I used for i3. And I'm going to show you how you can install it and configure it also to work with BSPWM. But this tutorial should be enough to get you up to speed for configuring this window manager. So this is the basic installation of BSPWM. Again, as I said in the video, in the next videos, we are going to install Polybar in here and we are going to customize it a little bit further to our liking. So stay tuned for that. I hope you liked the video, guys. If you did, please hit the like button below and subs to the channel if you haven't already. Subs always helps us out. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by visiting our Patreon website or you can donate your PayPal through our website as well. Thank you so much for watching the video, guys, and I'll see you very soon in the next one.